When we started our businesses, we thought that because we were great plumbers, that would translate into being great business owners. But that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, successfully operating a home service business has very little to do with the trades. Hey guys, I'm Tony Wally. And I'm Matt Baldwin, and this is The Coach's Corner, a podcast dedicated to helping you create a thriving business and stop thinking like a tradesman and start thinking like a CEO. Welcome to the show. Man, did I hear you say that you were out working like with tool, like manual labor? Is that what you just <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I was, uh, I was doing manual labor and I don't do it much, which is kind of going to roll into the theme of what we're going to talk about here today. But yeah, I'm, I'm building a new shed in my backyard, um, which somehow I can like in my mind differentiate it from doing plumbing. Cause I don't want to do plumbing at all. Um, Welcome but- to the show, everybody. <laughs> but nail guns and uh hammers and saws like that's a little bit of a different thing so uh you yeah, know i'm building a new shed we had a real bad windstorm here um actually back you know we were talking about y'all had the tornadoes by you um mm-hmm. on one of our episodes and the next day we got the same storm we had a real bad windstorm and it actually ripped the doors off of our shed um so we've we've needed a new shed for a while so I started the process last weekend of uh, of building it. Um, and, you know, it's kind of funny that, you know, this is the theme for today because it kind of fits in perfectly. Um, but, uh, you know, it was nice to be out there. I was, I was talking to you and Bo and Richard about it yesterday, and it was like something about just like having tools in your hand and, you know, especially if it's on a weekend, like having tools in your hand and doing a project and getting to see it through, right? It brings back a little bit of that nostalgia of who I am at heart, right? Which is just a freaking blue collar guy um but uh you know it's isolated from work where it's not like i'm out running calls and then i get sucked back into that i'm a technician thinking right yeah um although i actually did yesterday i have to change my sump pump so i still know how to do i still know how to do a little bit of plumbing story keeps getting worse and worse are you back in the (laughs) truck is that what you're trying to tell me (laughs) um but no, it was nice to just be out there and like, it was beautiful out. It was like 70 degrees. Um, and I was just out there, you know, doing my thing and it kind of just comes right back and you hit a groove. Um, but the thing that we want to talk about today is actually the opposite of that, which is kind of funny that that came up. But um, yeah, the well, just the before you go of- any further, I want to let everybody oh, yeah. know, take it from me and Matt. If you ever feel like when you come out of the truck that you're going to lose all your plumbing skills and knowledge. It takes about 30 minutes to get it all back because you have muscle memory and you have, yeah. you're not going to forget it. It's like riding a bike. Anyway, yeah. I digress. Yeah. Um, that actually yesterday, the sump pump was the second time since I got out of the truck that I had to do plumbing. Um, mm. And it wasn't, it wasn't difficult. You hate to you see know? You hate to see it. You hate to see me having to go upstairs and change into my work pants, put on work. But actually, no, I didn't even. I I I was wearing my my khakis and my loafers, swapping out the sump pump in the basement. But um, uh, no, kind of the opposite of that is what I wanted to talk about today. And this was a tough one. This is a tough thing for me to get over on a couple different uh, levels. Um, but it's basically um, you know, understanding alternative cost. Um, oh, yeah. and if, if that doesn't ring a bell with any of the listeners or something like that, it's, it's real simple. It's right. It's, you know, how much does my plumbing company charge an hour? Right. That that's what an hour of well, my time is actually worth more, but that's what an hour is worth. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and how much does the landscaper cost to come and cut my lawn for me once a week or once every other week or whatever it is. Um, and very quickly you could see that, well, he charges $40, right. And it's going to take me all day Saturday. So not only the money aspect of it, right. But it's, um, it's the freedom of getting that time back. Mm -hmm. Uh, because if I was to do it myself, not only do I have to go buy a new lawnmower and a weed whacker and a blower and all these things, right. Yeah. On top of that, it's going to take me what, three or four hours on Saturday to do all of those things for my yard to look not as good as it would have if I had just hired a landscaper to come do it. And then on Saturday I can hang out with my wife, hang out with my kids, go to the sporting events, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And that's if you don't have to work on any of the stuff 
because it's been sitting there for however long. <laughs> it's got bad gas in it where you got to yeah. clean the carburetor. It's never just, hey, I'm going to walk outside and crank the lawnmower and cut the grass. It's always nine or ten pulls, and it's not cranking, and you're like, <laughs> what's going on? And then it finally cranks, and it starts up, and then it dies three seconds later. Yeah. And you're standing in a big cloud of white smoke, <laughs> wondering if you should just call the landscaper and just give him all the stuff that you pulled out. <laughs> Here, you could have this. I don't yeah. want I don't want your 1983 push mower, Mr. Wally. Yeah. I don't I'm I don't never gonna I promise you I'll never try to cut my own grass again. Cause you know they can <laughs> tell, like just like a barber can tell, like that's a what's a weird situation. <laughs> like if you if you decide that you're like some people's wives cut their hair, and then all of a sudden you realize that you want to go get a barber to cut it who was cutting it before, and they're like, mm, who cut your hair? <laughs> you know? Well, why did they do that? Yeah, like it's a real, it's a real. Well, keep keep it on, keep it on brand. It's like, uh, you get you show up to a service call. It's like, uh, who put this water heater in? <laughs> yeah, and all of a sudden they feel like it's an interrogation. Yeah, you ever been? Um, in, this is such a wormhole. But have you ever been in the barber shop and you know that you're, you know, the other barbers are starting to finish up and you know they're fixing to ask, "Hey, um, uh, you ready?" And you got to say, oh, "I'm waiting on him," or "I'm waiting on her," <laughs> and they're like, "Oh." Oh, all right. I'll just stand here and act like I'm oh. being productive. <laughs> well, that I mean that I don't I don't cuss much on here, but that's that's the good old. I'll just go fuck myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, like that I'm is the stereotype. Like I'm opening mail. <laughs> I'm gonna act like somebody loves me. <laughs> act, well, before you know, you could just check your phone, like before. I have I have I've had the same barber for a long time, so I haven't experienced this in a while. But worst case scenario, the barber can just oh yeah, I'm just uh just checking my phone. Before it was just like I'll just stand here until somebody has pity on me and gets in my chair, you know. Yeah. But anyway, back to alternative calls. All right. I used to what think. Is, oh yeah, go ahead. Sorry. That's all right. I just I was looking over here and like I used to think people that worked in places like New York city, which I'm far from New York city. I know you're from New York, but just bear with me here. Like people that had drivers in New York, I thought it was just because they were just snobby and didn't have like, they, they were too good to drive. But in actuality, it's, they spend so much time in traffic that they can get so much done in the car while somebody else is driving to more than make up for the money and time that they would lose had they chose to drive themselves. And that's a different way of thinking about things. And there's so many examples of that, but that's just one that I, I thought about, you know, you used to watch movies and you, some, somebody would be driving the person around in somewhere like New York. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, sticking with the manual labor thing, it's like uh, one of the big ones for me to get over was we got all this furniture delivered last last summer because we redid our whole backyard we put it in a pool um all this stuff and we had these new like beautiful teak adirondack chairs that had to be put together mm -hmm. uh and they sat in a box in my driveway for like i don't know like three weeks and after the ashley has come to expect it but after after the first week it was like hey you think uh maybe i could call someone to put these chairs together and i was like absolutely not I am perfectly capable of putting chairs together. And then it was like, you know, four or five days later, hey, you want me to just call someone to put these chairs together? Because it doesn't seem like you're going to be doing it. And I was like, no, absolutely not. You, you're not calling someone to put chairs together. Like that is, it's Ikea furniture. Like literally I could do it myself. Um, And that went on like that for another week or two. And then I finally caved. I was like, all right, fine. Just call someone, just this one time, call someone to put the chairs together. Um, and he came on a Wednesday, which is our, our date day. Um, you know, we go out to lunch on Wednesdays Yeah. and something about the experience of him being at the house, putting the chairs together, um, and me being at the, uh, pizza and beer garden, right. Hanging out with my beautiful nice. wife. Yeah. Hanging that out with my beautiful awesome. wife. Yeah. It's awesome. You know, hanging out with my beautiful wife, having good food, having a couple drinks on a Wednesday afternoon. Um, something about that kind of clicked in my head like oh 
yeah, this makes sense. This is way better than spending three hours putting chairs together, right? <clears throat> and yeah. he was done. He brought a little helper with him. He was done in about an hour and a half, and I think he charged us like sixty bucks. Um, and I was th then I could understand the time value exchange <laughs> of putting chairs together, right? Yeah, when you see it right there in front of you like that, it's easier to understand that that's that's exactly what it is. What you just said right there, it's a time value exchange. Mm -hmm. Like, I ride my bike in the morning sometimes, <clears throat> and there was a stretch for like it had to be the whole time the kids were out of school. So almost a three month period where I would ride by this particular house and the car would always be parked on the road. And like not every morning, but maybe every third morning, the person would be out there at their car with a portable um, air compressor plugged into the cigarette lighter mm -hmm. or whatever you call it nowadays. It's not a cigarette yeah. lighter, but the charger. And they were airing the same tire up for three months. And it's like, I have to talk to Matt about this when we talk about alternative <laughs> costs, because even if that tire had to be changed, you're talking about $200 or less. Best case scenario, if it had to be patched, maybe $25, but look at all the time and the effort that that person had to put forth to just <clears throat> Keep the tire aired up and you you get into a pattern of where, oh, I guess I got to air the tire out this morning, you know? Yeah. Or he maybe started to predict it and now he has to wake up 20 minutes earlier than he normally woke up to air up the tire and it's completely yeah. disrupted his whole schedule. Yeah. It's totally asinine, but you feel like in, in, in certain situations, you're like, well, I got to do it. You know, there's no way I can just go up there and get a new tire or get it patched. Who has well, time for that? Yeah, I mean, well, it was probably like the first time it happened, and then the second time it happened, and then the third time he was probably like, should I just go get a new tire? And then he was like, oh, nope, I'm running late for work because I got to pump up this tire. I can't go get a new one. And it just became it just became his routine. Part of his routine. Yeah, Needless. Just, yeah, just like we talked about, you know, cutting the grass becomes part of your routine. Like Saturday morning, I'm going to go out there, I'm going to cut the grass, I'm going to edge it, I'm going to blow it, I'm going to do all these things. And it's just part of your routine where you don't even think about the fact that, hey, if I just hired someone to come by for 40 or $50 a week and do this, then I could spend those three or four hours with my wife or with my kids, or we could go on a day trip or something, right? Or even if you're still in the truck, I could go run three or four calls on a Saturday, you know? Yeah. And you kind of stop looking at, like, what is this going to cost me and start looking at, what am I going to get back to replace it? And if it outweighs what you're going to pay for it, then great. And you start looking at things like, I don't know, what's a good one for plumbing business? Service Titan. Mm. Or whatever, whatever. Field Pulse, House Call Pro, whatever you use. We use Service Titan, so I'll say Service Titan. Like when I initially was told, hey, it's going to cost you this much. And I'm like, holy shit. That's going to be, I mean, that's, I'll be working to pay for service Titan. And then you realize that it is a percentage of your top line revenue. So you got to look at it like that, because if you look at it like, oh, it's going to cost me $3,000 a month, you'll never, you're never going to pull the trigger on it. And it could be service Titan. It could be whatever, whatever it is that could help you service Titan, Eddie, um, uh, another technician a csr a dispatcher if you look at what they're going to cost you a yeah, bookkeeper and what are you getting back whenever you you don't have to do all these things that that they're going to provide so that's that's a new way of looking at that that i think is worth talking about because i for the longest time looked at what is this going to cost me in the dollar amount and then i'll try to try to justify it, but I couldn't because it's like, man, that's a lot of money. But yeah. you don't look at it in, in terms of, well, my revenue is this, but if I invest in service Titan, my revenue will be way up here and the percent mm. is going to be way smaller. And that's just, the yeah. Way you go. Yeah. Well, that's the way I like to frame it is, you know, a lot of people will think about something like that, right? Like a bookkeeper service Titan, whatever it is. 
and they'll say, you know, how much is this going to cost me a month? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and I like to kind of flip that around and say, what's it going to cost me to not do it? Right. And that's that flip side of the coin that you're talking about where it's, you know, my revenue is this and it's going to cost me this. But if I pay this, my revenue is going to be this. Mm -hmm. um, and it's costing you a whole lot of time. And whether it be time, money, efficiency, anything like that, uh, it's costing you something. And, yeah. you know, relate it back to like being in a in a blue collar situation where you're a plumber and, you know, you're working with the tools every day and your hands can only take so much of a beating right before you get carpal tunnel and arthritis. Your knees can only take so much of a knee beating before you need a knee replacement, your hips, your back, everything that our body goes through as someone that does manual labor for a living. Right. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's only so much time. There's only so many times you can bend down and kneel down and crank a wrench and swing a hammer and all those things. Um, or you're hearing, right. Running saws, all that stuff like that all affects you physically. Um, so there's, there's like a finite amount of times that you can actually do those actions. So when you think about it that way, it's like every time you go to a service call, every time you put in a water heater, you know, fix it and angle stop, what, whatever it is, you're selling a piece of your body for money, right? That's really what it comes down to. Yeah. <laughs> Not in that well, way. If I had a nickel every sick. time I heard you're that. You're sick. You are <laughs> sick, man. But dude, that uh, is like I had, dude, I was laughing, but man, that is so true. Like you are paying yeah. a price little by little and you may not notice it when you think about it like that, yeah. but then you start waking up and you can barely move because you're, you're aching and your back's hurting or for God, God forbid your back, you throw your back out and you can't go to work that day. Mm -hmm. And you didn't, you didn't invest in the systems or the people or both to put a plan in place for you to get out of that, then the, then there's a balloon payment at the end because you're going to be paying um, big time when you can't provide the physical labor, but then you don't have anybody in your place to do it either. And that's a bad yeah. place to be probably the worst. Yeah. And this is going to be a little bit of a rabbit hole, but I'm going to take a little sidestep there. Um, and just yeah, like weird. related. To, yeah, that's weird. Um, Related to like my personal life a little bit is that something I enjoyed my whole life was snowboarding. You know, I started snowboarding, uh, I don't know, 10, 11, 12 years old, something like that. Uh, and I did it all the way up until I was 21. And when I was 21 years old, I went on a weekend guys trip snowboarding. And it wasn't even the first day of the trip. It was a half day. Cause we got up there around noon. We're like, let's get in a half day on the slopes. Um, and I was flying down the mountain, I guess. And I knocked myself out cold. Um, and it wasn't my first concussion. It was probably my sixth or seventh. Um, but, uh, something about that one. I mean, it was, it was bad. It was like three or four days and I was foggy and everything. Mm. And then, uh, you know, I, I tried to go snowboarding one more time, maybe when I was like 22 and I was super hesitant and I couldn't really just, you know, when, when it's something like that, it's, you just got to kind of lean into it and let your instincts take over. Right. Like it's like riding a bike and, uh, I, I just couldn't do it. I was super nervous and I actually, I, I hung up my boots and my snowboard, um, for a decade because I was so scared of injuring myself physically that I was not going to be able to provide for my family. Yeah. Um, so was it a wise decision? Maybe. Right. But like at some point, you know, Ashley said to me, she's like, you just got to go, you just got to do it. Like, what's the point in, you know, it's kind of like your why, right? Like what's the point in living life if you're not going to get to do something that you enjoy because you're so scared of what's on the other side of that door. And you could kind of relate that to a service titan or a bookkeeper, right? Like you're so scared of that cost of entry that you're not going to look to the other side of what can I gain by doing this? Yeah. It's, it's easier said than done too. 
I just want to tell you a quick story about somebody from the South that tries to go snow skiing. Um, I tried to go snow skiing. Well, I did go snow skiing, but it was my first time. And there's like, why are you, why are you calling it snow skiing? Why isn't it just skiing? Oh, I guess you go water skiing, but yeah, because down here we we're, we I live on the Gulf, so we go. There's water skiing. There's we just call that skiing down down here. But <laughs> like, like there's like a whole different set of like fashion wardrobe that people wear to to go mm. snowboarding, and I had no idea. So I just my first trip was to, um, I think it was to uh, maybe Liberty Ski Liberty in Pennsylvania, and uh. Like we got there and there were people like probably like you there. They were like they had the helmets on, like the Burton helmets and the whatever brand that is with the black widow on the mm -hmm. ski pants. Cool as hell, man. They look like Tony Hawk out there. And I, on the other hand, had to borrow like a onesie from my dad's chemical plant. <laughs> He's like, hey man, you can just wear this. And it was a the navy blue, like a like a like a like jumpers and it had like blue mink i mean blue fur fake fur on it i looked like the dude from the from the shining that was <laughs> driving a snowmobile around and i had this red toboggan and it was oh man i stuck out like a sore thumb and i what got it to wait hang on time out time out we're gonna we're gonna digress for one more second because what is a toboggan <laughs> Well, I call that the things you put on your head, like a sock hat. The, it's a, you know, the, it's a, toboggan, a toboggan's a sled. Oh, well, we don't call it that. We call that uh, the, the thing you, the, the like the, the, the winter hats that you pull over your, a beanie, a beanie. A beanie, okay. Yeah. There we go. So I had that on and I was sitting on the ski lift with one of the, like the cooler looking guys. He had like a, like the helmet and goggles on and like a Burton jacket and just he looked cool from man like right out of a like extreme extreme x games or whatever and i, I like i got on this you know you, you're riding right next to the guy and i was like hey man how's it going and he didn't say shit to me he just turned his head like because <laughs> i was <laughs> sitting there like the snowplow driver from the shining yeah anyway yeah, on the on, on the mountain you want to be like 30 years in the past when it comes to fashion like neon's still really cool. Um, oh, yeah. Like just if you pretend it's like the 80s, you'll be good. 90s are probably okay. There's a lot of bell bottoms on the mountain. Um but no no nobody dressing like the groundskeeper from the shining. No no toboggans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't get that memo because I look like a complete moron. That's so interesting that you call them toboggans. Toboggans are like those old school wooden sleds that curl up at the front. Oh yeah, I just I don't know. I don't even know what that is. Well, you've never been snow sledding, I guess. We just call that sledding up here. But um, <laughs> all right. So what are some other things? Let's get back on topic here because the ADDs ADD. What a wormhole. Um. What uh? What's some other things that you've done? Whether it's in your, it could be in your personal life, in your business, right? Like, what are some things you've done that have either freed up time, uh, money, or yourself physically, right? Because those are the three things that we're going to check off. It's weird that you say that because I really want to go into my experience. I just got a text from none other than the car wash that I have a membership to. It's like, hey, uh, you're only three minutes away from a spotless, shiny car wash so washing my car at one of those places up there that did, did, have you had like an explosion of car washes being built in new jersey no we haven't but now that you say it a couple of my clients have been building car washes and people building car washes all over the place well i didn't understand it but i went to one the other day well it's been probably a month now because i bought a membership and dude, it is a party. Like you pull through and you get your car washed and then you pull around and you can like vacuum it out. And man, they got towels set up. They got glass cleaner, air fresheners. There's reggae playing, lights flashing. <laughs> it is, it's a, it is a party. And I look forward to washing my car every time I go and cleaning it out. I mean, it's not a problem. And, but if I had to um, unroll the hose 
get all the armor all and and all the rags out, find the the tire scrubber brush mm. every single time. I, it'd be it'd be a real struggle. So I'm willing to pay whatever it costs. I I can't remember what it costs. Not 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 much. Not enough for me to unroll the the hose mm. and, and do all that. Um. But it is, man, it's awesome. I'm just thinking about that that freaking car wash. It's it's <laughs> they really set the mood. But that's that's one of the things. And um yeah. so there there are others like um you know my one of my one of my favorites is uh when's the last time you cleaned your gutters? I don't have gutters. You don't have gutters? What yeah. what where's the rain go? <laughs> It's balls off the side of the house. Onto the, <laughs> but my neighbor has gutters, and he he doesn't clean them out because I see the um, I see the the leaves spilling over. Oh well, that was one of the things. It was like you got to clean the gutters, right? You got to set up a ladder. You got to climb up there on the shaky ass ladder, which I hate. As I get older, the heights just get me. Um, and scoop out the gutters and all that. Um. And then one day, like the gutters were really bad. Like we had little baby oak trees growing out of the gutters because mm-hmm. the acorns fell and they started to grow. And Ashley was like, when are you going to clean out the gutters? When are you going to clean out the gutters? That whole thing, like with the chairs. Um, yeah. And she was like, can I just like find someone to clean the gutters? And I was like, is that a thing? Like there's gutter cleaning services. And she found some guy and he comes, he comes quarterly so he comes every three months and for it's like 94 dollars. two guys show up they climb up on the ladder they clean your gutters in about 10 minutes bag everything up and take it man what an idea right um so yeah and you don't have to climb up climb up on the ladder and again waste half your saturday climbing onto the roof and uh and it just because then you're in a bad mood after you have to do all that you're like I don't feel like doing anything else because now I got to go take a shower after I've been and not, on these and not only that, but I don't even have to think about it. I don't even have to think about, is it time to clean the gutters? No, the guys just show They came last week. We're getting ready to I go. I bet out you get more like, bougie too. I bet like, it's like that with the grass that's been cut or the, the yeah. uh, gutters that you're like, why haven't the gutters been clean yet? <laughs> well, it was actually funny enough. It was a Wednesday again, right? It's a Wednesday. We're getting ready to go out to lunch and here comes the gutter guy. <laughs> and I was like, "Excuse me, can you please pull out of the driveway? I have I have to go eat food and drink mimosas." While you clean and bag all of our <laughs> tiny oak trees that are growing in the gutter. <laughs> it was like that when I when we first start. So the first time we had someone clean the house, you know, and that was a big mental obstacle to get over because that's yeah. Laura's favorite too. She's gonna love this episode. Yeah, she she'll love that. When you first hire someone to clean the house, it's like. We should really clean the house. The the housekeeper's coming. And people that don't understand this concept of alternative costs, they think that you just have some made, you know, some you're too good to clean the house and you, you have to have someone do it for you. But really it's like a lot of times when we're doing this podcast or I'm doing a uh, business coaching, the, the house, the person that cleans the house is in the house, cleaning the house. And I'm in here doing this, getting stuff done mm-hmm. or doing stuff that pertains to my plumbing business. And if I had to clean the house, that would just, it would just rob me of so much time. And that was, but that one was a big one to get over because I think there's like a, there's like a status, a perceived status that comes along with you having someone clean your house. That would be a huge trigger for someone to say, it must be nice around here. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, we actually talked about that on one on one of the podcasts. Like, you know, I said to you, uh, if you know, if I had a nickel for every time I heard someone on a construction site say, "Oh, I got a new truck," or this or that or the other thing, or "Oh, we're buying a house," oh, it must be nice to have money, right? Yeah, and it's not even about having money; it's that time value exchange of I can make more money by ha- hiring someone else to do this than I can doing it myself. Yeah. Because you need all that brain space and you need the the time in the day. Otherwise, it just gets filled up with these mundane tasks that, I mean, they have to be done. But when you think smarter, 
what is it? What's the thing? Work harder, work smarter, not harder. When you do that, when you put it into action, that's when, you know, you're getting a lot of things done and somebody's cleaning your house or somebody's cutting your yard. It's not because I'm too good to do it. It's man, I can get so much more done and my time increases exponentially. So yeah. Love this concept. Yeah. What else could we do to, um, increase our time because that's what we're talking about the freedom the freedom is the yeah, that's something that, of time that's something that i was working on with uh my personal development coach and it was like you know what are the things that you do in a in a day that you could free up your time right um and the focus lately has been on what are the things that ashley does in her day right and how can we free some of that stuff up off her plate so she can she can operate at a higher level, right? Yeah. Um, and that's things like doing the dishes, doing the laundry, right? Um, yeah. You know, just, you know, hanging out with the kids, right? Like not hanging out with the kids and spending time with them, but like, you know, oh, I've got a meeting, right? But one of the kids is homesick and now I got to cancel the meeting, right? It'd be nice to have someone that can hang out with the kids for an hour and a half while you go to that meeting, right? Yeah. And I'm a big fan, you know, some people will take that to the extreme where they hire like someone to drive their kids to practice or something like that. Like I, that is my time, like hanging out with my kids on the way to practice, you know, and I know you too, like you mm -hmm. spend a lot of time in the car bringing Luke to practice or lessons or stuff like that. And that's good quality time that mm -hmm. as fathers, we get to spend with our children and we get to have those discussions about, because when they come home from school, it's how was school? Fine. Good. Yeah. What'd you, what'd you do? What'd you do? Nothing. Oh, yeah. you didn't learn. You were, you were at school for six hours. You did absolutely nothing all six hours. Um, but after a couple hours and, you know, they get home at two or two 15 or whatever it is. And now all of a sudden it's, you know, four or five o'clock in the afternoon and they've had some time to decompress from the day and whatever, eat a snack, whatever it is they do, take a nap. Um, they, uh, if, if you then ask them, you know, how was school? Oh, well this happened and that happened. And, you know, Oh, you know, Who's this girl I keep hearing about? Is that your girlfriend? No, it's not my girlfriend. Leave me alone. I don't have a girlfriend. Oh yeah, that's um, off limits. That subject's <laughs> off limits. <laughs> but that's and by that's... the way, I used to I used to think I used to love like uh, well I miss because Ella drives now and I used to drive her to uh, her theater company <clears throat> and it's I miss that you know and 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 before when we would drive and we would talk a little bit on the way and I'd wait on her and drive her back. I didn't think I would miss that because those are things that, you know, I just took for granted, but now she drives herself yeah. all around town. That is, that is, you know, we do things to free ourselves up so we can be in those uh, present in those times. Uh, if I was still doing things the way I used to do things, I would be in a truck on a job while my daughter and son were taken to practice by their mother or somebody, you know, having to call somebody in the family, Hey, can you do this? Tony's working late again. You know, I, I don't ever want to be in that situation again. So we do things like this, like we're talking about uh, implementing things that multiply our time and you have yeah. to do. It. Yeah. And we think back now, like, right. Like some we're doing something or yeah, whatever. It's a birthday party. It's like, Oh, remember that time we were here for the birthday party. Right. And it's like, no, I don't. And then she's like, well, where were you then? I was like, probably working. Like yeah. that's all I really did other than, go to birthday party, you know, like doing stuff. With, if I wasn't doing stuff with you guys, I was probably working. Yeah. You know? um, so it's nice to have that time back to spend with her or with the kids or, you know, with my nieces, nephews, like whoever it is, it's just nice. It's nice to have that time back and have that time to drive them to practice or coach their team or, you know, whatever it is, you know? Yeah. You know what another, another one is that I failed to mention, but it's huge is the taskmaster. Like, you have to temporarily give up a bunch of time mm. to ultimately have freedom. And that's one that <clears throat> is, is one of the the most common ones that, that I deal with, with clients that I come in contact with and that I have conversation with is that's the biggest hurdle. And it was huge for me too. And I know, I know what it's like to have to be faced with mm -hmm. that much of a, time consuming thing 
But man, when you get done with it to the point where you can put it into play, if I could just bottle that up and, and show everybody that that's um, it's worth it and you, and you have to do it. Yeah. All right, man. Well, I think we kind of, I think we kind of hit all the points we we're trying to hit on this one. What do you think? Yeah, man. Let's get out of here. All right, cool. I'll see you later. All right. Well, that does it for this episode of the Coach's Corner. Make sure to like and subscribe below and make sure you join us on our next episode to continue to learn how to stop thinking like a tradesman and start thinking like a CEO. Thanks for stopping by.